How do people feel about CSS in 2023? Has Tailwind just completely taken over everything and no one's really writing CSS anymore? And what new features are people actually using? Well, we're going to find out today by looking at the state of CSS 2023 results. And unlike other ones like this, I'm going to focus sort of on the highlights of it and not go through the entire survey, but I'll leave a link down below if you do want to dive through the entire thing. Now, I haven't gone through this at all, so it's going to be completely fresh. But one thing I do want to say is people always ask me about this survey and sort of some of the purpose of it. And part of it is the browsers are actually using this to know what features they should be prioritizing. So one of the reasons that I do think it is worth taking the survey every year is because let browsers know what you're interested in and what features you're using or the features you want to be using. Now, with that out of the way, let's jump on over here to the demographics, or I guess we should say the t-shirt. If you want to get a really snazzy looking t-shirt, they do have one right there. Uh, but let's jump over to the demographics demographics. And here we can see that this we are almost 10,000 people who have filled out the survey, which is quite a, a large amount. And you know what, we're going to zoom in a little bit on this. Uh, I think that will make it a little bit easier for everybody watching to follow along, especially if you're on your phone. So we can see that there's people from all over the place that have primarily in the US, but uh, Europe is well represented as well. But that does mean that other areas that have a lot of developers might be underrepresented in this, but by showing us this, uh, at least we know, but by seeing this, at least we know we can take that into account when maybe analyzing these results a little bit. Now, the features part here is one of my favorite ones, which is uh, they sort of group the different things. But I love this visualization here, and it might take a minute to understand. But one of them is the awareness, and the other one is actually use of. Now, the one thing with looking at it like this is that the little bit, I like the visualization. We're sort of grouping it by types of things. But if we go down, we have group by awareness or by usage. Um, so I'm going to group by awareness because I just find it makes it a little bit easier to look at. And right away, this makes me so happy that Subgrid has very high awareness, even if the usage is low. Um, so that and even um, here with container. So it's two things where browser support is not perfect yet, but that people know what it is. So that's really good because as browser support increases and actually containers high and Subgrid's about to take off with Chrome supporting it. So those are going to sort of become um, very big, I think. I'm actually surprised that the media query range context is so high. I wouldn't expect that to be uh, so high awareness on there, to be honest, but hey, that's cool. What else do we have here? Nesting has very high awareness. That makes sense to me. Uh, even if it's low usage as well. And usually the most important things, current color. Who are the people who don't? Current color has been around forever. Um, anyway, that I'm glad people know about it, but I would have expected that to be a lot higher. Uh, but yeah, the interesting ones are usually sort of any surprises that are at the top. And as I said, these are the two that make me happy. And also that like we have a really big difference um, in like the awareness to actual usage. So but seeing what we have up here, it makes perfect sense to me. And I'm just really happy to see these. And the other one that's interesting is always at the bottom. Uh, font palette doesn't surprise me. It's a little bit of a it's for color fonts only, um, which isn't very many fonts. And it just if you have a colored font, you have multiple colors in that font, you can change the colors using your font palette, uh, the force colors to anchor position. I didn't know what it was when I did the survey. It was the only feature I didn't. I'm really looking forward to it, though. It's pretty amazing. I'm actually really surprised at the low awareness for app property, just because I see it talked about all the time <laughs> um, and I, I've used it in videos. So that surprises me a little bit. It's only supported in Chrome right now even though, or is it coming to Safari? I think it's being worked on, or maybe it's even landed. I think it's only being worked on. We could always double check that later, but um, I'm surprised that's so low because that's it's really cool <laughs> um, what it does. I'm surprised accent color is, is low. I mean, most of these ones, I'm not too surprised at seeing down at the bottom. Um, I really, I, I do think that property surprises me. I thought that more people would know about it. View transitions, I think is going to be one of the big gainers, even where I'm surprised more, there's not more awareness there, but accent color, I'm really surprised by actually, but, and talking about big gainers, I said, where <laughs> would probably be a big gainer here is a, a ratios over time, which is really cool. Uh, so let's just see variables as you'd expect custom properties, um, is just growing. The big one here is a oh, gap for flex box. Is this awareness over time or usage? We're on usage. Okay, so this is okay. So Flexbox gap is is going up as you'd expect over time as um, browser support increases for it. Uh, this is stalling out. Filter effects is stalling out, which is kind of interesting. Has is going up. That's gonna be a big gainer. Container queries, nesting, they're going up. That's not any surprises. Let's just look at awareness. Very very similar. One thing we can do, and this is a new feature now, is this compare data thing. Um, just so you can actually like choose like presets versus like experience level, for example. 
um, and actually like add different filters and get different information. I'm not going to do anything now, but if ever you do want to sort of analyze the data based on years of experience by location, other stuff like that, you can actually do that now with this little toggle there, which is really cool. All right, so frameworks, let's see what's going on here. And oh, look at that. They're all going down except for pure CSS, which is saying stagnant basically. So that's interesting. Um, yeah, look at this drop on some of these. That's really, Bulma's really going down. I mean, I think this speaks probably to, oh, what's this one? Open, uh, look at open props way up there. <laughs> that's Adam Argyle's uh, one. Look at that. That's awesome. And what's that Uno CSS, which I've heard good things about, but I haven't tried yet. Um, but that's really cool that, um, that so many people are, is that using retention? So, okay. So retention means people that are continuing, have used it and continuing. I'm assuming <laughs> bootstrap's always going to be at hundred percent across the top. Uh, so this is, so Tailwind's, oh wait, Tailwind's going up. Everybody knows about Tailwind. I'm surprised it's not at hundred there, to be honest. Uh, let's get usage. So you, okay. Yeah. That's what I was expecting. Let's get retention. Interesting that Tailwind's retention is actually dropping a little bit. That's, I don't know. I'm really surprised by that, but usage, you can see it's still going up. So more people are using it, even though it's still only at 50%. I honestly, with what you hear, I would have expected it to be a lot higher. It sounds like everybody's using it and I'm the only person who doesn't anymore. Um, so I, I do find that interesting. What I think is it's finding its place and the people who love it or really love it and will continue to use it. And the, the thing with its retention dropping off a little bit is probably exactly that. You're, it's finding that balance where the people who really like it are continuing to use it and there's new people trying it that are like, eh, it's not really for me and they're not using it anymore. Um, and, and I really do feel like for most people, it is that love and hate people either are, <laughs> it's, it's the bee's knees for them, or it's just not for them. Um, so, and I think that's what it's doing is it's finding its place right there. Just like, I mean, pure CSS, look at that consistency right there. <laughs> so I wouldn't be surprised finding something like that, um, with everything else sort of dying off along the way and bootstrap slowly, but surely declining. Um, but not, it's probably going to be around forever just cause it's so there right um, but really interesting what about interest even interest in tailwind is slowly going down i guess once again just because people are not you know they either know it or they don't at this point um and whether they want to use it or not um but yeah that that really does actually surprise me quite a bit next is css and js which i know people uh are, are a bit split on as well um this is one of those places i've mentioned this every year when i look at the, the survey results but just by having so many of them it to me shows me that none of them are really perfect um, cause they're all sort of have the same idea. Um, they just do it in different ways, uh, a little bit. Um, and this is retention. Let's just go to awareness again. And you can see like, it's pretty, they're all pretty at this stage, like established, uh, interest slowly dropping for all of them a little bit, which doesn't surprise me, especially as people move to like using tailwind instead of CSS and JS, JS solutions, or of course there's others, you know, between Vue, um, Svelte, and uh, Astro, and some other ones probably where you just have like simple scope styling within it. You don't really need these as much. Um, so yeah, you can see that I think once again, it's a little bit like people who use it, they like it, it works for them. And then other people that don't need it aren't using it. <laughs> um, and they sort of have their niche. Um, it just looks like CSS modules has gained a little bit on styled components, which these two have always sort of been the two big ones. So I don't think any surprises there. Even though actually I said no surprises there, but if we look here, you can see that the style components is the, the top one here. So let's look at retention. Oh, you can see retention. I didn't notice that retention. It's actually dropping off quite a bit where CSS modules seems to be the one that's sticking around. And that's sort of, um, you can see that here where this is really dropping off the styled components one where there's a little surge here going on with, uh, CSS modules. So interesting. All right. Other tools. So P and post pre and pro post pre and post processors. Um, so as you'd expect, SAS is still up there. It's still being used. This is, um, just on, do you regularly use and it's being regularly used by, uh, about 50% of the people who answered the survey, uh, which is, you know, people are always asking, is it still relevant, especially with the advent of all the new stuff coming to native CSS? And first we have to wait for browser support to increase on a lot of those, but yes, I still think it is relevant. There's a lot of other stuff you can do as well. Um, post CSS as you'd expect is, is strong. Um, and then a lot of no answers and none, cause that's basically what most people are using. 
so the the CSS usage usage um, one thing that's a little bit disappointing for me here is on the testing environments first like where um, where do you test and everyone's just saying desktop which again you're working on a desktop so of course you're going to test there uh, but then like that's a huge drop off everybody has a phone test at least on your own phone you probably have the friend who has a phone if you have an iphone your friend has a android and vice versa so like test on phones even if you can't test on every phone you should test your stuff on phones um tablets obviously uh you know again i guess not as many of us have them but it would be good to test on them uh i'm also really surprised that congrats everybody who's testing on a feature phone like why would testing on desktop with keyboard only uh, be ho lower than a feature phone. <laughs> if, if you have a, a desktop, you have a keyboard, just use your site without using your mouse and see if it works. It takes not very long. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't surprise me that screen reader is so low just because uh, they're hard to use. They, they have a learning curve. There's different screen readers that are optimal for different browsers. Um, so it doesn't surprise me it's low. It sort of sucks that it, it's as low as it is. Um, but I would say like that, you know, in here we have like the testing tools, um, like, well, that's Axe Lighthouse. It's sort of taking a lot of different things in there. Um, but, you know, the screen reader one, there's ways of, of getting either people to help you out there. But I think it's something we should focus a little bit more on. Uh, I'm not very talented with one. I usually try and ask people um, and, and, or get people to, to, to test things for me that know what they're doing, um, which is a barrier because you might not be able to pay for services that can do something like that, but um, something to think about. But like this, you could definitely do. Just use your, try and use your site with a keyboard and see how it goes. This is uh, the CSS versus JavaScript balance. Um, this one's kind of interesting. Let's actually do this one. The more this way, uh, the more people are writing JavaScript and the more uh, going that way, then it's more writing CSS. So basically no one only writes CSS. Uh, most people don't only write JavaScript. And then uh, of course we have like the, the sort of a, a balance in the middle that ranges more heavily towards JavaScript, which I don't think is a surprise. Uh, browser incompatibilities. Existing features you have difficulty using or avoid because of a lack of support or a difference between browsers. So most people didn't answer, but has nesting container queries, subgrid all at the top, um, scroll baller styling. I get it. You can still do it. Um, this, you know, Firefox has its own, but it's not that bad. It's a, it's annoying to style, but, um, at property, definitely get that. The range queries cascade, all that makes sense. Missing features, animate auto. There is stuff in the works for that. And it, actually I did a video. I'll put a card there somewhere um, talking about how there's a trick to do this uh, that we can currently use, but there, there's some talk on stuff um, to do on there. Mason layout, 100% agree. Uh, it's on the way, sort of. Um, now that subgrid's here, there's no reason that browsers can't start getting that going. Visually, need of support for visually hidden, I agree there should be an option for that. More pseudo elements, 100% agree. Should always have more, you can never have enough pseudo elements. <laughs> Uh, grid line styling. That's interesting, uh, because we actually can style if you use CSS columns, you get like a, you, that's where the gap property actually came from. You could actually style that gap. You could put like dotted lines, you know, like a border or a line or whatever down it. Um, so people asking for that for grid lines, that's a really good point. That'd be pretty cool. The main pain points for CSS browser compatibility, of course, is always at the top, but anybody complaining about that doesn't know about the old days. <laughs> I mean, I, we can still complain. I agree. Though I think the big problem now with browser compatibility is that there's so many new features coming to CSS and they're not all immediately available to use in production it is just frustrating. Um, cause honestly, for the mo there, there's always going to be some inconsistencies. There's like this random little thing in Safari that doesn't work well, or there'll be something in fire, whatever. Uh, there's like those little annoying things that are really hard to fix. I, I get it. Um, but at least like there is an overall consistency these days. And like the interlope is a really nice thing. That's helping browsers stay more consistent as well. Uh, form element styling. I get that everything else here is more, you know, scope responsive design and, and all of that stuff that you'd sort of expect. Interesting actually here. So we're in the resources section. Now the blogs and magazines, CSS tricks is still at the top. Uh, it's kind of dead. So I'm curious like over time, if that's going to change, cause you're not reading it anymore. Um, which is a shame. Uh, I'm actually surprised that Smashing Magazine is so low. A lot of good ones down here, guys. Modern CSS Solutions, uh, that's from Stephanie Eccles, is a great resource. CSS in real life is fantastic. 
um css weekly is awesome um so yeah definitely check out some of those um if you don't know them just like come down here and like click on these and and find the ones that you like there's some really good ones so a lot of people ask me about podcasts and if i have any recommendations like here is the the list of podcasts to listen to basically um <laughs> right syntax um and I'm actually the shop talk show. I would have thought would be higher to be honest with you. Um, CSS podcast, hundred percent. Um, but like just come through here and open them up and, and there's, you know, this is such a great list of podcasts. So, uh, come through here and check them out. I think the big web show is dead. Um, but other than that, that's probably why there's so few that are answering on that one. Um, but yeah, if you want to listen to a web development related podcast, here is a great list to start from. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> We're in the people section. Uh, I do appreciate that very much. Um, people you read, follow, or just want to highlight. So yes, thank you very much. Uh, other names on here do not surprise me at all. Um, let me just go down and see what, what's going on in here. And actually, I'm sorry, is Jay so low? <laughs> uh, to be honest with you, Jay puts out so much awesome stuff. I get why I'm here just because I've become sort of a face. I'm on YouTube and, and all of that. So people know me. Um, but like lots of the people that I learn everything from are, are on this list. And if people ask me how I get good at this, I follow these people, uh, on Twitter or on whatever, you know, social media, um, and everything. So this is just like the list, a good list of people to follow, uh, in general that are putting out some really amazing content. Um, oh, and look, we have like the Mastodons and everything on here. What are the ones that are blank? I'm curious what they planned for that didn't get it filled out on here. <laughs> So yeah, to be at the top of a list with all of these amazing people just makes me feel very nice. But also, uh, uh, you know, I'm humbled by it a little bit. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you. Oh, this one's fun. I love this. The award section. So we have to things that stood out this year. Most adopted feature awarded to the feature with the largest year over year. I'm going to say has. Yes. <laughs> all right. The most commented feature, which received the most comments. Ooh, I have no idea. What's the most commented feature? S container queries? Oh, subgrid. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, no other feature came close to generating as much FUD. Oh, container queries is second, but wow, that's a big difference. I guess it was people complaining that it's been years that Firefox has supported it and no one else has, but it's in Safari and it's coming to Chrome. We're going to have subgrid. It's, it's finally, finally happening. Highest retention. Would it be Tailwind? Oh, open. I saw that. Um, and then we have most write-ins, the most written in answer. I have no idea. Oh, Panda. What was Panda for? Panda. Panda was one of the CSS and JS solutions. So yeah, there we go. And so yeah, there there it is. We're at the, the conclusion. I won't read through it now, but I just want to say that, uh, you know, go and dive in, check out the results. I find there's some really interesting stuff in here and I'll be back next year to both look at the survey and and I'd love to know your thoughts on the current state of CSS. So please leave them down in the description below. And with that, I would really like to thank my enablers of awesome, Andrew, James, Michael, Simon, Tim, and Johnny, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.